Hey, welcome to the photo department. Today I'm drinking grapefruit juice. No, this isn't coffee. I had a lot of coffee this morning. I had to get up really early to go take a written exam for a job I applied for. So cross your fingers and I get it. It'd be a very cool job to have. For those of you who don't know, grapefruit juice is my favorite juice. Grapefruit's my favorite fruit. Mm. So today I have another film review for you guys. This is the Fujifilm Industrial Fuji Color film. I've been getting a lot of requests to do more reviews on different films. I have a whole list of different films that I haven't even tried yet myself. So we're going to be going on this journey together, which is going to be very exciting. I went to Glass Key Photo in San Francisco today to pick up some of these guys because I ran out. I have a bunch of 120 cut and just sitting on my desk gathering dust, which is not great. So I had to get more film sleeves. I got some more Cinestill 800 because I'm planning a shoot that I think this will work really well with. And then I picked up some Fujifilm, Fujicolor Industrial film. I've never tried this stuff. They have a 100 and a 400. I got both. Got these at Glass Key Photo in San Francisco, which is one of my favorite photo stores. They carry lots and lots of film, cool film cameras. They know a lot about film cameras and they specialize in specifically film cameras. So I've read a lot about Fujifilm Industrial online. I haven't seen it in person until now. I've seen some examples shot online, but I've never been able to shoot it myself. So I shot a whole roll of the Fujifilm Industrial 400 in my beloved Canon F1 with my 50 millimeter F1.4 lens. Most of the shots I took were shot wide open and some of them were shot stopped down to F4 or F5.6. This camera is pretty fast, goes up to two thousandths of a second, so I was able to shoot in bright sunlight, not, not be an issue. I also decided to meter this film at ISO 200 because I read a lot of reviews on this film saying that it's really great at box speed, but it really shines when push to stop. And I love to push film a little bit over, so I decided to do that. So we're gonna see together what that looks like. I'm gonna take this roll of film that I just shot. We're going to process it right now, and then I'm going to show you guys the results when I scan it. Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple of the images that I scanned after I processed them. And I like this image a lot because it shows the desaturated tones and colors that this film kind of provides, but it still uh, emphasizes the reds like in her lipstick here. Super cool. I love the way that the reds look on this film. And then even when you zoom in, that um, the grain's not intense it's very nice it's kind of understated and it makes like a nice texture it doesn't like it's not overbearing i think the grain structure is really nice really great detail in the shadows i love this picture a lot um, again kind of washed out subdued colors really pretty colors here nothing nothing too intense except for right here, the red in her bag. You can see it's a lot more saturated than like the pinks or the greens. I like the way they render the greens. It's a lot warmer than like Pro 400H. Again, nice skin color. The grain is very subtle. 
nice color on the lipstick there. Super nice. This is my favorite picture of the series. You've got these really beautiful pink cherry blossoms and the sky gradient is like blowing my mind. It looks really beautiful. And her skin color still uh, very accurate. Her lips very red. I think this is a really good testament to what the colors can be um, with this film. Uh, the greens here are rendered warmer and pretty accurately. I would say this is exactly what this bottle looks like in real life. Um, I love this lens too. Look how cool the out of focus parts are. Super nice. Really great detail. The grain is not impeding on any of the detail here. The only thing that's impeding on any more detail would be the limitations of my scanner. But this is a really great photo. The reds in the flag are really popping. Super nice. Again, the reds here emphasized. Um, his skin color is very accurate. This looks just like it was looking like when I was there in person with him. There's me in a mirrored window in the Tenderloin. And this is indoors. I wanted to show the shadow detail when in indirect light from a window. Uh, this is my roommate washing a pot. And, uh, well, it's a pan, actually. Whatever. Great detail in the shadows. Uh, I just love the way it makes the chrome, the metal, stainless steel look. I love the way that everything kind of looks. It's very, very nice. The lucky cat in the window. A lot of detail. The grain, once again, is not taking away anything from this image, and I think it really supports the image texturally rather than distracting from what the image is. And then I took some photos of my roommate's Jeep Cherokee. Uh, it's this faded, kind of like, I don't know what you call it, just like, it's not like a bright candy red, but uh, this is super accurate to what it looks like. A little maybe more saturated than in real life, but it looks really cool compared to like the green here. The green's a little more warmer. The reds are very saturated. But look, they look great, like a deep red. Yeah, you can barely notice the green here. It's just all around really amazing looking. And I love the way that these pictures came out. Long story short, I love this film. This actually might be my new all-purpose 35 millimeter choice. Um, it has some of the pastel muted color palette of Fuji Pro 400H, but without the price tag. It has a very tight, subtle grain that adds texture and dimension to the photos. It seems to do really well um, with home C41 developing. Uh, it scans really well. There's a lot of very detailed shadows. The highlights look great and the colors, the colors, the colors look great. Everything is warm, but not like too warm. The greens are rendered really nicely and blues are very great. Everything is very accurate. All the colors look really nice but the reds, the reds are fantastic. One of the reasons why I shoot so much Ektar is because the reds are very front and center, um, very tastefully so, and I love shooting Ektar, I shoot a ton of it, but the combination of the muted, less saturated color with the really popping reds in the Industrial 400 is very pleasing, I love it. I think I love everything about this film and the price, because it's cheaper than Fuji Pro 400H. It's about on par with Ektar. So I recommend that everyone watching this who loves to shoot 35mm film get some of the Fuji Industrial 400. Uh, I haven't shot it at box speed yet, but I imagine it'll be just as good. Um, all the images I shot and that I showed on this video were push to stop, so they were shot at 200, but developed normally in C41. 
So, yeah. This is one of the coolest films I've shot in a long time, and it was a surprise. I didn't think I would love it this much, but I do. So, kudos to Fuji. So if you can get some of this, get some. It's really, really awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, share this video if you'd like. Um, if you have questions, you can ask me in the comments. You can email me hello at seastormphoto.com. And uh, yeah, it's like 1 o'clock a.m. on Valentine's Day. Well, I guess technically the day after Valentine's Day. So I think I'm going to go to bed. Who am I kidding? I'm probably going to edit this video tonight. I'm that excited about this. I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, follow me on Instagram, ghost photo on Instagram, and more film reviews. I have a lens review coming up. Um, I have uh, more stuff, I promise. It's all coming. Another camera review. I'm not going to tell you which, but there's a camera. I'm looking right at it. I'm reviewing that next. All right, thank you guys for watching, goodbye.